Let's take a look at Webflow's new Designer Extensions API. We'll build this little app that when we click the GIF Palmet button, adds some ASCII art to our page. Hey there, Webbay. All right, so to build a Designer Extension, you're going to want the LTS version of Node.js installed on your computer. And you're also going to want to be at least a little bit familiar with TypeScript, which is a superset of JavaScript with types. And it makes your code a lot more robust and safe. Now, go ahead and launch Terminal on your Mac. And let's go ahead and zoom in a bunch here. And the very first command that we're going to run is going to install the Webflow CLI to our computer. So I'm just going to drop that in here. We have npm install at Webflow slash Webflow dash CLI. Click enter and that will install everything we need. Now we need to change directory. I'm going to clear the terminal here and I'm going to type cd documents slash coding slash webbay. And that is the folder that I want to install my app in. And so I'm going to use the Webflow extension init function. And so I'm just going to drop that in here and then click enter. And that's going to scaffold out a default project for us. Now we can change directory into our GIF Palm app and click enter and type ls. That's going to list all the files and the contents of that directory. But I just want you to see that there's stuff there because now we're going to use Visual Studio Code and I'm just going to type code dot to open. So we have our project in VS Code here and let's go ahead and start at the bottom. We have webflow.json. This is your app manifest file and it's just an object here with the property of name and the name of our app, which is GIF Palm. You can also add the size. You can, uh, there's a couple different values you can add here. I'm just going to go with the default size to start. And then also we can specify a public directory with public dir. And the default is public here, which we can see exists over in the side over here. This is our public directory that's going to get served by the Webflow extension serve function. So going up from the bottom, we have tsconfig. I'm going to ignore this for now, but this is a configuration file for TypeScript and basically tells TypeScript how to compile our code down to JavaScript. I'm going to skip up to package.json. This has more info about our app. I'll start by drawing your attention to the scripts object in package.json here. The big one we're going to start with is the dev script. And so when we run this script, what's going to happen is we're going to call npm install, which is going to install everything uh, in our dev dependencies object here. So it's going to install the typings for Webflow. It's going to install this concurrently package as well as TypeScript. And then it's going to call concurrently and do two things. It's going to say Webflow extension serve. So that's another command that's going to serve our app. And then one last command that's actually going to build our app or compile it from TypeScript into JavaScript. Next, I'll open up a terminal in VS Code with command J, and I'm just going to run npm run dev here. And so we see that what it's doing is it's installing all of our packages right now, and then we should expect to see something get served for us. So that just completed, and we can see this message down at the bottom, serving your extension at localhost on port 1337. Nice job, Webflow. What do you do? What I do? I'm a pimp, P-I-M-P, -I if you don't know, you do now. Let's go ahead and just control click to open that. And we can see that there's actually an app running here in our browser. It says, select a textual element in the designer and press the button below to give it some placeholder content. Now, this isn't going to do anything because the app's not running in Webflow, but let's see exactly what's going on here. We need to tell Webflow about our app. So let's go into your dashboard here and your workspace and click the gear icon. We'll click over on apps and integrations, this tab here, and scroll down to app development and we're gonna click create an app. Now we can give our app a name. Let's call it GIF Palm here. Uh, some description in the description box. You can upload an app icon if you'd like. And then I just like to redirect back to webflow.com slash dashboard. Okay, and we'll click continue. And now we wanna turn on these ex designer extensions APIs. We're not gonna use the data client REST APIs for this app. Go ahead and click create app. Now let's go ahead and install our new app on a site. So with the GIF Palm app here, I'm just going to click install and I'm going to hit command F and search for GIF. There it is. So I've already got a site created and we'll go ahead and authorize our app within that site. Now let's search for our site, GIF Palm, and open it in designer. We've got this puzzle piece icon on the left sidebar here. It says apps. Let's click it. And we can see now we have this GIF Palm app right here. So I'm clicking it and we're going to launch our development app. And we've made sure that this is also serving from localhost on port 1337, like it said in VS Code. So let's click that. And boom, we have a little app here in Webflow. It's got the title of GIF Palm, and it says the same thing. Select a textual element in the designer and press the button below to give it some placeholder content. I don't want to ruin my title, so let's go ahead and drag a placeholder paragraph in here. And we're going to click this lorem ipsum button. And we can see it just go ahead and replaces the text that was already lorem ipsum with even shorter lorem ipsum. So... 
Great, we've got a basic app running. It does nothing of use to us, but we have learned how to scaffold our app out. Let's take a look at what's going on in the app. So I've got VS Code back open here and we're looking at index.html in the public directory. Now we can see it's loading the styles.css sheet from this link tag. And then we have a form tag with an ID of lorem. It's got a div, it says select a textual element in the designer. This should look very familiar. And a button that's a lorem ipsum button. We close the form and then we also insert our script. So in styles.css, this just has some CSS to style everything in our Webflow app. And then we have index.js. Now this is our TypeScript compiled down to JavaScript. So rather than read it here, let's read it in index.ts. We can see that on the document, we're using the function get element by ID of lorem. And the element with the ID of lorem was that form. And we're gonna listen for the on submit event. When that happens, we're gonna run a function. Now we're going to prevent the default action of that form submit, and we're gonna run our own code. So the very first thing we're doing is we're creating a variable called L, and we're also calling the webflow.getSelectedElement function and storing the value of that in L. And we can see that that value is going to be this type any element. And we're also using the await keyword here because this is an asynchronous function. We can see it returns a promise of type any element. So we are then going to check if L exists. So if L is not undefined and L has some property called text content on it, then we're gonna run some sort of function. So actually, if I hover over L here, this is the power of TypeScript. We can see that we've narrowed the type down from an any element type to one of 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35 elements that all might have this property of text content. And so we can call this method set text content. And we could change this to, hey there world, uh, exclamation point. And then we also have this l.save function. And we'll notice that save also returns an undefined promise. Anytime I see a promise, I wanna await it. So I'm gonna add await there. And let's go ahead and save and head back to Webflow and see what happens. So back in Webflow, I can refresh our app here and select the text and click the lorem ipsum button. And we can say, it says, hey there world now. This app is still completely useless. So let's make it more fun and pay our tribute to GIF Palm. Now let's add some functionality to our app that creates some beautiful tribute art to GIF Palm. I'm first going to check if l.type equals block. So this is actually checking if we have a div block selected in this case. The type returned by that is this type block. You can explore the Webflow documentation for all the different types that you could return. For example, uh, CMS collection list wrapper will turn a dynamo wrapper uh, type. So there's all sorts of stuff for you to check out there. And we're going to declare our variable GIF palm and set it to some beautiful little doggy art here. Next, we'll go ahead and create a new element. Now this is going to use the create DOM function that exists on the Webflow object. And we can pass what kind of element we want to give it. So in this case, we're gonna give it the P tag, which is our HTML paragraph tag, as you may know, but you could give it really anything here, script tag, table tag, uh, maybe a dialogue tag, whatever. And we'll store that in this new L variable. Next, we're gonna call set text content, and we're just going to pass our GIF palm variable into that so that new L gets a text value of this little doggy ASCII art. Next, we'll get the existing children and add the new element to the existing children of that div block. So I'm going to create a variable, call it existing children, and we'll call the get children function that exists on the element there. Remember, this is a div block. Next, we're going to call the set children function and set children takes an array. So we're gonna spread the existing children and then also add our new element to the end here. This is very similar to the append function if you're used to DOM manipulation with JavaScript. Next, we'll await l.save. So this is just going to save it onto the canvas. I'm going to save my project here. Now we're back in Webflow, I'll refresh the app and I'm going to select a div block over here on the left and I'll click the lorem ipsum button and we can see now we get some little doggy art. So we've utilized the APIs on the Webflow object to add elements to our Webflow canvas using the extension app. Now, I think we should also explore the styles API. So let's go ahead and make our doggy art a little bit more prominent. I'm going to look for an existing style or create a new one if it doesn't exist. So let's go ahead and create a variable called style and we'll await the get style by name function that exists on the Webflow object. And we'll pass the string of GIF palm, which is gonna be the name of our class here. So now I'll create an if else block. If that style exists, then I wanna run some code. But if it doesn't exist, then I wanna create it, right? So if it does exist, super easy. We call it new element dot set styles and then pass our style within array syntax there. Otherwise, we're gonna to have to create it. So let's work on that now. So I'll create a variable called GIF palm style and I'll call the create style function on the Webflow object and pass it the same name GIF palm. 
Next, we'll call the set properties function that exists on this new style object that we have. And it gets its own object as well. And this is going to take CSS properties. So I wanna give it the color blue. I wanna give it a font size of 80 pixels so it's very big. And then also a line height of 1.5. Now something to be careful of is that you need to use the long form CSS names here. So if I just type padding, you can see Webflow is gonna give me an error. Like I can't give any padding to this because I need to use the right property. So it will allow me to say padding top and padding bottom and things like that. But I'm not gonna add any padding now. I'm just going to save the style and I will await that since it's an asynchronous function. Let's go ahead and save and come back to Webflow. And back in Webflow, we'll refresh our app and we'll select the div block again and click the lorem ipsum button. And now we can see we get a big blue GIF palm on our Webflow canvas. And we can see it's getting a class name of GIF palm and it shows up here in the class selector. And we can see the size is set to 80 pixels, the line height and the color all blue, just like we said in our app code. Now that concludes our basic overview of the designer extension and some of the basic APIs and functions available to us through it. So I think there's a ton of possibility here. Really excited to see what everyone in the community builds. What do you wanna see me build next? What do you wanna do with some Webflow apps? Let me know in the comments below and that will help me guide the next video. Of course, there's gonna be another video recommended here at the end too. If you liked this one, then you'll probably like that one. If you like GIF Palm, then you're gonna like that video too. All right, later.